All right, it's so good to see everybody here watching online. How's everybody doing? My name is Pastor Robert, the associate pastor, alongside Pastor Mark, our senior pastor. How you doing today, Pastor? Well, we're, we're doing great. And, you know, tonight we're going to be talking about a, a really important subject. Yeah. And I think every single person can relate to it. We're going to talk about being happy. Yes. And it's not, a, it's not a sissy message. I believe it's, uh, a, no it's a warfare message because yeah, I think there's a battle you know, in life, in our families, That's where right. we're having a hard time finding just peace yeah, it is. and happiness. Yeah. So we're, there's a lot of misery, a lot of pain, a yeah, lot of anger, is. a lot of depression. Right. And, and I, I really think like the, the cards sometimes te seem like they're stacked against right. us, even right. pressures of life. Yeah, that's right. And if we don't learn how to learn, learn, learn how, to, how, be how to be happy, and that's we're right. going to talk about that tonight, yeah. learn how to be happy. You don't have to learn how to be depressed. No. You don't have to learn how to be angry. You don't have to learn how to be full of fear. No. But, lear but learning how to be Happy, happy is, right. is something that we need to be taught. That's exactly and right. I don't I don't know anywhere they teach it. Like in no, school, they, 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 teach they, it teach school. You, they teach you math, they teach you English, English science, studies, history. history. But when was the last time someone taught you how to just be happy yeah, <laughs> to enjoy that. life? Nobody teaches you that. And that's what's so awesome with the Word of God. We can find all of our answers. And in this answer, how to be happy, we're going to see it in Scripture tonight. But before we get started, if we can, if you could bow your head and close your eyes wherever you're at. Maybe you're at home. Uh, maybe you're at a workplace right now. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day you've given us, God. And this is the day that the Lord has made. And we are going to rejoice and be glad in it. And Father, maybe people that are watching right now, maybe they're struggling, they're having a hard time, maybe someone is sick. Father, we just speak healing in the name of Jesus. By your stripes, we're healed. Maybe someone tonight, Lord, needs restoration in relationships, in their marriage. You are the God who restores. So Father, we give you this time and open up our hearts, our minds, our ears to hear and listen of what the Spirit of God is saying tonight. And we just declare happiness in everyone's life right now. We thank you, God. We give you this time. In Jesus' name we pray. And we all say amen. Amen. So I love this topic. We're in the book of Matthew chapter 5. And here's tonight's title, How to Be Happy. And I think you said it best, Pastor. There is a warfare Warfare with the enemy, with trials that we face and tribulations. But, you know, happiness doesn't come from the external things that's happening around us. It comes with our relationship with God. Well, well maybe, maybe that's the fallacy is yeah. that there's, there's a wrong, when we're talking fallacy, wrong thinking. Right. That we're trying to get happiness from the outside in right. instead of having happiness from the inside out. Right. And, and, and as long as we're trying to get happiness from the outside in, then it's a thing out there that I don't have that needs wow. to make me happy. It's a person that needs to change that's going to make me happy. Right. Exactly. It's a certain amount of digits in my bank account that are really going to make me happy. And this yeah. is the idea. You know. I am not saying that you can't experience temporary happiness with a thing. Yeah, you because can. you can get a brand new car. You'll see it on the on the shows. Yeah. The You're price. always looking at cars. Man. Yeah, I love looking at cars. And, <laughs> and, and um, I think, well, my, my son-in-law, yeah. Gabriel, was on The Price is Right or something like oh, that. Right. Well, he was on The Price is Right. He won and a they, car. And they, he won a brand new car. <laughs> and, and, of course, people are, yeah. But, you know, right now, they're thinking about trading that car. <laughs> That's <laughs> because, the way it is. Because no matter what you get out of life, it, it's never enough to make you fully content. So yes. what we're finding in the wow. world is fleeting happiness. Yeah, that's it's a good not, point. It's not eternal, it's not and it's not deep, no. and it, does, it, it comes and it goes, exactly and we're right. always like, a, like the old saying, a dog chasing after his tail. That's exactly right, and I love this question. Let's answer this question first. Does God want us to be happy? What does the Bible say about being happy? Yeah. Isn't that yeah. a great question? Yeah, great Does question. God want us to be happy? And I, and I think we could answer this tonight. Well, we're going to answer yeah. this tonight. Does God want you to be happy? The goal of this whole message or this series, we're going to do a series on how to be happy. And really what we're going to be going into is nine attitudes or mindsets that lead to a happy life. Yeah. And tonight we're going to cover one of the mindsets. But before we get to it, we, let's just lay a foundation. And this is a question we're going to answer. Does God even want us to be happy. Yes, so we're going to talk about some facts about happiness 
in the Bible, what God says about happiness. Well, fact number one is that, I want you to get this, Jesus wants us to be happy. Yes, that's and right. And the whole series that we're getting for, that good. we're getting this teaching from is the first teaching that Jesus ever did wow. really on yes. earth. He, on his earth. first teaching. His first teaching. He's teaching his disciples, and he could have chose any subject any, in the world, right. and he chose this subject, yeah. how to be happy. That's right. So let's look at yes. this portion of scripture. We're going to read through the whole sermon. Like this is his whole sermon. Yeah. It has like nine points in it or, <laughs> or eight points, I think, in it, nine or eight points in it. And we're going to read right through it. But you're going to see a word that keeps popping up. Happy, 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 happy. 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 And That's what right. he's saying is, why why question of what, if I want you to be happy? If I didn't want you to be happy, why would I prioritize That's my right. first teaching? Wow. It's called, it's called a Sermon on the Mount. Yeah. And this is a church a teaching on the Beatitudes. And the first teaching is attitudes and mindsets that lead to a happy life. I let's go that. ahead and read that. Yeah, let's read that. If you have your Bibles or the app there, Matthew chapter 5, 1 through 10. We're going to read in the GNT version. Jesus saw the crowds and went up a hill where he sat down. His disciples gathered around him, and he began to teach them. Again, Jesus is first preaching, and he began to teach them. Right. Happy are those who know they are spiritually poor. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Happy are those who mourn. God will comfort them. Happy are those who are humble. They will receive what God has promised Happy are those whose greatest desire is to do what God requires. God will satisfy them fully. Happy are those who are merciful to others. God will be merciful to them. Happy are the pure in heart. They will see God. Happy are those who work for peace. God will call them his children. And verse 10, happy are those who are persecuted because they do what God requires. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Wow. That word happy in this scripture, I want you to jot this down, and maybe you're looking at our app. What does the word happy mean in this scripture? Well, the Greek word here is makarios. Makarios. It means this, a state of well-being and contentment, joy, to be supremely blessed. So does God want us to be happy? Yes. He wants us to be supremely blessed. He wants us to be in content. But in life, isn't it hard sometimes? Maybe somebody's watching. It's hard to be content. We're always desiring this or want that. But God brings contentment. Yeah. And, and this portion of scripture is really uh, describing a happiness that's supreme. Yes. That means it's higher than any temporary or fleeting happiness you'll experience. So he's saying the yeah. ultimate happiness and true contentment or true happiness is found in God. And Jesus yes. is talking about this Makarios happiness yes. that every single one of us can have. And I pray that this, this series will break the power of depression off yes. your life. The Break the power of addiction. Why did we even start yes. the addiction? We were trying to find happiness. happiness. That it would break the power of a sin yes. that we're going to that gives us temporary happiness, but it leaves us in long-term misery. But we're asking the question, does God want us to be happy? Yes. Well, of course yes. he does. He, he has a whole teaching, and his first teaching is on happiness. Let's continue. To, I love that. Let's keep on digging yeah, into this I love that. fact. I love Jesus this, wants yeah, to be happy. Yeah, I love this statement. The Bible says that there is nothing better than being happy. The Bible says there's nothing better than being happy. Look at this scripture in Ecclesiastes 3, verse 12 in the CJB version. I know that there is nothing better for them to do than to be happy and enjoy themselves as long as they live. Right. Isn't that awesome? Right. So let's check this out. Wow. This is, I want you to understand this that you were created originally to be happy. Yes. And I'll even say this, the devil knows that. Yeah, that's right. And since he knows that you were created to be happy, that there would be a drive within you that if you're unhappy, you'll do everything you can wow. to find it. That's right. But there's a problem, I think, even in the church or yeah. with, with people that, are, that know about God. Could it be that you're not happy 
because you're not allowing yourself to wow, be happy. That's a good point. Let's go deeper. That's a Could good it be that you're not happy because you think it's not spiritual wow. to be happy? Wow. Where that we're so religious that if we're smiling, having a good time, cracking a joke and <laughs> laughing, people look at you like, why are you so happy? You're right, a Christian. Right. But the yeah. idea should be the opposite. Yeah. People should see the joy in our lives, yeah. see us how we're enjoying life, and look at us and say, where do you get that joy from? That's right. What are you on? That's right. And we say, well, I'm not on anything but God. <laughs> I have a relationship with God. You mean this is how you are without a drug? This is you, how you are right. without, without something on the house? Yep, that's just the way I am. Right, right now, God is, wants to drive this home. Yeah. I want you to be happy, Amen. and I want you to enjoy life. There's it. nothing better than enjoying life with God. You can have an enjoyable life. Yes. I'm trying to convince someone. Yes. It doesn't matter how hard it is right now. You can have an enjoyable life. Yes. And it's time for you to give yourself permission to smile again. Yes. Yeah, well, man, you don't know what a lot of pressure I'm going through. Yeah. I understand. It's time for you to stop smile. focusing on the pressure and start enjoying your life. The pressure is going to be there no matter what. Why not make a choice that right now there's yeah. nothing better than for me to enjoy life and I'm going to start enjoying life the right way. Hey, it's a choice. Man, I love it. It's a choice. Just yeah. practice smiling right now at your house. Practice. Practice the joy of the Lord. I love this statement you put down, Pastor. God can make us happier than anyone or anything this world has to offer. Right. I love that. God can make us happier than anyone or anything this world has to offer. Psalms 4, 6, and 7. Many people say, this is what people are saying, I wish I can enjoy the good life. Okay, so Man. this is saying that people are saying this. Yeah. I want to, see, this is why we have such an attractive message because I don't right. know anyone that doesn't want to enjoy life. Right. But I think some people think Christianity is boring. No way. It's so they say, man, if I, if I serve God, I no can't way. have fun no more. No and the reality is, if you serve God, you're going to have a fun yes. or a happiness and a joy that you've never experienced right. before. Because everything that you've been going to to find joy and happiness right. is actually a counterfeit to the real thing. Right. The real joy, the supreme joy, the Macario's joy is found in the Lord. They're saying, I want to enjoy life. This is what people are saying. Yeah, I love that. Again, this is Psalms 4, 6, and 7. Yeah. Many people say, I wish I could enjoy the good life. Yeah. Lord, give us some of those blessings. Yeah. But you have made me happier than they will ever be with all their wine and grain. Right. Wow, we'll be happier with God. God, there's no one, that, no person, nothing can substitute the happiness and the joy of God. And that's a lot of times why we're not having joy. Because we're trying to find joy in things. We're trying to find joy in people. We can have some good times. Me and my wife, we have some great times. But my joy or all my happiness is not found in my wife. It is found in the Lord. Well, let's think about this. My wife makes me happy. That's yeah. true. Yeah. But this is the idea. As long as I keep looking at my wife as a source of right. my happiness, I'm going to put a burden on her yeah. that she can't fulfill. Right. And this is the reason. There's going to be things that she does that don't make me happy. Yeah. <laughs> and there's things that I do that don't make her happy. Right. So if her joy is on my performance, then her joy is conditional right. on based on how someone's acting. And this right. is why some of you can't be happy because you're, you're putting the weight of your joy yeah. and happiness oh. on someone right. or something. So when that thing is gone, your joy is gone. Joy is gone. When that yeah. person is not acting right, you lost your joy and peace. Right. And then you know what you do? It's your fault. <laughs> How about let's take personal responsibility right. and realize that no one has that responsibility oh, or could even handle that responsibility oh, of making me happy but God or my relationship with God. Love and and this, is what, it, this, is what, this is what David is saying here. Yeah. He says, you know, I've made a conclusion. You made what they're looking for, yeah. I found. Right. And you made me happier than they will Everything. ever be with their wine. Right. Or let's just say this. God makes me happier than you'll ever be with your 
drinking, drinking. than your drugs, <laughs> with your pornography, with your, whatever thing that you're going to yeah. that you think, man, it's awesome. This the truth is when it's all said and done, it doesn't. At the end, it does. It's not awesome. At the end, it's miserable. At the end, it's depressing. Right. At the end, it rips you off. And what he was saying, right. whatever they're going to to make them happy, you make me happier than whatever they're getting. Yes, I love that. So again, the facts, three facts about happiness. Number one, Jesus wants us to be happy. Yes. Here's fact number two. We need to be taught to be happy. That's a good point. Yeah. We see that in Matthew 5, verse 1 and 2. Jesus taught the disciples about happiness. We need to be taught. I love that point. Look at the scripture again, Matthew 5, 1 and 2. Jesus saw the crowds and went up a hill where he sat down. His disciples gathered around him, and he began to teach them. Happy are those who know they are spiritually poor. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. We need to be taught how to be happy. Overall, pastor, we are really a, a unhappy people and really a miserable society. Yeah. I know we have some stats here. Overall, we're unhappy. Take a look at some of the stats. Americans are the unhappiest they've ever been in 50 years. 86% of Americans say they are unhappy overall. 86%. 86% of Americans hate their jobs. 70% of couples, they want a divorce. But only 50% actually do it. That's crazy. Man. Like, I, everybody wants a divorce then. <laughs> I mean, Lord, help us, I, I don't want a divorce. I'm just saying, but 86, there's only 14% say. And I wonder how many of them said that, said, I, I'm not going to say I admit I want a divorce, but I really do, right? But, but the idea, you know why? And this is the reason people want a divorce. This is the reason. The real reason, you're not making me happy anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the idea. Yeah. So they actually thought that the marriage or yeah. that person would actually make them happy. And when the person is no longer making them happy, they want out. That's and they're right. looking for another person to make them happy. But this is a problem. Wow. We find out that when they go to another person to make them happy, they went with the same fallacy or the same, uh, the same mistake. And what happens? The chances of that relationship not working out wow. are actually astronomical. Right. The, 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 the percentages actually increase from the 86% or the Man, 50%. Exactly right. I love the scripture, Romans 3, 16 and 17. Destruction and misery always follow them. They don't know where to find peace. People right now, they don't know where to find peace. And where do we find our peace? Where do we find happiness? It's in God, which we're going to really dive into later. But major depression, look at this. People are hurting, Pastor. Major depressive, major depressive disorder affects approximately 17.3 million Americans. There are over, right now, 28 different depressant medications People are hurting right now. 28 different pills or medication to try to ease the pain. And we're here to tell you today, the only way to ease that pain or get rid of that pain, it's found in Jesus Christ. Well, this is the issue with medication. Man. Medication, all it does, it numbs yeah. pain um, and it, it actually covers it up. But it actually, it, this is what it can't do. It can't heal, it can't heal. or it can't make you happy. That's right. It could help you cope. Yeah. So we're living in a depressed society. Not only yeah. depressed, um, we're suicidal. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot of young people cutting themselves. Yeah. And, and, they're, and they're looking, where do I find joy? Where do I find peace? Yeah. And maybe we're not talking enough yeah, not. about this subject that actually God wants you to have joy and peace yeah. in your life. Yes. And, and today, we're going to come against every lie yeah. that makes you think, I can never be happy. Yeah. We come, that, we come against that right now yes. in the name of Jesus. We come against every spirit of suicide yes. that wants you to die, that stole your hope, stole your dreams. Yes. We come against that mindset in the name of Jesus. Yes. And we want you to know that there's a joy yes. that you can find in God that you yes. can't find anywhere else. You've tried everything else. Yes. Today's your day. Even as a Christian, Maybe today this is a light, a light bulb yeah. that turned on because you thought I'd be happier if I do this or accomplish this or accomplish this. And your faith 
has no longer, for your joy, has no longer been in God. You've now put your faith in, faith in your happiness and your, uh, uh, an accomplishment or a level or, or thing you want to do or, or in an identity. And you've actually lost your focus or you've lost your source of joy. And you're a believer, but it's time to get your joy back. And it's found in the Lord. And you know what's so good about this? We can be taught how to be happy. That's happy what we're talking happy, about. Right. We're, we can be taught how to be happy. And yes. these attitudes and mindsets that we're going to yeah. be learning in these next few weeks are going to, Jesus is literally teaching us. Yes. These are the attitudes and mindsets that lead to happiness. I love it. I love it. So fact number two, we need to be taught how to be happy. I like this statement. Jesus was teaching his disciples to be happy. He taught them, the disciples, not the crowds. This is a point that you have to get. Jesus taught them, the disciples, not the crowds. The rich and satisfying life are only for those who are followers of Christ. The rich and satisfying life is only those who are followers of right, Jesus Christ. Right. We see that in Matthew 5 where the multitudes were following Jesus. Right. Multitudes. And then Jesus went up to the mountain. Yes. The multitude stayed. The disciples went and sat down right. by Jesus. Right. So in this portion of Scripture, you kind of see two groups of people. You see the crowd and you see the disciples. What's the difference between the crowd and disciples? The crowd are just there to see. Right. The disciples are there to do and learn. And learn. Right. So you have the crowd. Jesus saw it yeah. because he was performing miracles right before this. He was healing people. People were possessed. Big crowds were following. He goes, I wonder who my true disciples are. Let me go a little higher on the mountain. And there is when the disciples came because happiness is only for those who are following Jesus Christ. I love that statement. Yeah, there's, there's a scripture here in, the, in Luke chapter 11, verse 28. says, but he said, happy rather are those who hear God's word and put it into oh, practice. Wow, oh, there it goes. Happy are those who hear and put it into practice. Yeah, they hear and it. do. Who is he describing? Disciples. Disciples. So this is, I want you to think about this. There's a big crowd that are depressed, really. Yeah. There's a big crowd that are miserable. Yeah. And then what he does, he, he goes up to the mountain. And he goes, let me share some stuff with you. Yeah, and it. he starts teaching the disciples, and he starts showing them, let me show you how to live a happy life. Love it. Record this teaching. Man. So I could see them right now with notes. Yeah, I mean, just right writing now. everything down. And that's why we have it today. Yeah, yeah. So we actually, you know what God has done? Man. He's recorded a real secret yeah. meeting on happiness, a mentoring moment with his disciples. Disciple. And he's saying is, now I want everybody Every yes. disciple, every believer, and maybe you're saying, you know, I feel like I'm part of that crowd. I, I feel like I'm, I'm not in with Jesus. I've not made a decision to follow Jesus. I've never heard the word to do it. But today, but you've also found out that you're miserable. And you're saying, the fact is, I don't know where to find happiness. I'm miserable, and I feel like destruction and misery are following my life. And if today there's an answer for me where I can find joy and happiness, I'm ready to do here and do what God asked me to do to get that happiness. Hey, man, I love that. So, again, three facts about happiness. Fact number one, Jesus wants us to be happy. Say that right now at your house. God wants me to be happy. You got to say it. You got to know it. Fact number two, we need to be taught to be happy. And fact number three, we will never be happy without the right attitude or mindset. We will never be happy without the right attitude or mindset. Now we're going to barely start to dive in, and we're only going to cover one today. We're only going to cover one because of time. One attitude that leads to happiness. See, attitude, I love this statement, attitude is a choice. Attitude is a choice. There are right attitudes and wrong attitudes. Right attitudes lead to happiness, and wrong mindsets lead to a life of misery. It's our choice. There's right attitudes, and there's wrong. Right mindsets lead to happiness. Wrong mindsets lead to misery. So this is what Jesus is doing, because Jesus was saying this. Your whole life, your emotions, your family, your relationships can change yes. if your mindset changes. Yes. 
And what he's going to do now, he's going to dive into a teaching, and he just said, these are the eight mindsets or nine mindsets that lead to a happy or blessed life. Yeah. You can have it, yeah. but this is what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to change the way you're thinking. Wow. Because unless our Man. thinking is transformed, yeah. The Bible says we're transformed by the renewing of our minds. Mind. Your emotions can be transformed. Yes. Your life can be transformed. Your marriage can be transformed. Your finances can be transformed. And how does that happen? Through transformed thinking. Yes. So Jesus is now really attacking mindsets yeah. or attitudes. Right. And there's right attitudes and there's wrong attitudes. Every attitude that Jesus teaches us to have, there's an attitude that he doesn't mention that's a default attitude that leads to misery. Wow. The right attitude leads to joy. But let's look at attitude just for, let's look at attitude that we have a choice on attitude. The reason being yeah. here, uh, by the time we're done, I pray that you're willing to give up your old way of thinking Yes. So you could have a new life. Yes. I pray that you'll be willing to give up yes. the things that you've been going to that live really promise you temporary happiness, but mess your life up, right. mess your family up, mess your kids up. And I'm, be, I'm done with that. And make a choice. I'm done with that because I want to now take on the mindset that leads to true happiness. But I, before we do yeah. that, go into the Jesus mindsets, yeah. let's look at Luke chapter 11, verse 28, because it just talks about happiness being a choice. Wow. Is that Luke chapter, Luke chapter no, 18? Psalm, Psalms oh, Psalms 118. 118. Yeah, Psalms yeah. 118. Attitude is a choice. Psalms 118, 24. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be happy today. It's a choice. Yes. We choose to be happy. This is the day the Lord has made. And I and let us rejoice and be happy today. Every day we get a choice to be happy or not. It's a choice we have to make. Right. And it's not easy because this is warfare yeah, now. Remember, we're talking stuff. about we're talking about difficulties yeah. and, and there's been times that I that I've struggled and uh, emotionally and, yeah. and been facing fear, anxiety, or depression. And, and yeah. the more I think about the depressing thoughts Man. and the more I think wrong and the yeah. more, uh, or maybe I messed up and I'm condemning myself, yeah. and the more I just sit there in that mindset, yeah. the unhappier I get. That's right. Now, I'm the same person. Yeah with the wrong mindset. Right. So it could have been last week, I'm happy, I've got the joy of the Lord, but this week, I'm not happy. I don't have the joy of the Lord. What happened? My mindset. I took on yeah. the wrong mindset, and it could have been a failure that I just yeah. can't get over. Exactly. I keep going over the wrong thing that I did. I keep going over the mistake. I, I'm now thinking thoughts yeah. of regret, yeah. and I'm not thinking the right thoughts. Now, we can choose our yes. thoughts, and, and what I've learned about thoughts, mm. they can become habits. Right. If you have the right thoughts and you practice right thinking, before you know, you, you start thinking right by default. Right. But also we could develop wrong mindsets, which is called strongholds, strongholds. of the devil. Yes, exactly. There can be mindsets that make you think, I can't, this is too difficult, it's too hard, yeah. no one loves me, no one appreciates me, I'm, I'll, never, I'll never amount to nothing, yeah. uh, I'm a failure. You could think about that all day long. Uh, and this is a problem. It's going to wow. eventually lead to deep depression. That's or you exactly could even right. go the other way. I got this. I don't need God. I'm all powerful. That's I'm prideful. Right. Even God. those thoughts lead, the, lead to right. wrong emotions eventually. That's exactly right. So nine attitudes or mindsets that lead to a happy life. Let's go over just That's number one. one. We're going to go over one today. Attitude mindset number one. I need God. Attitude that leads to happy life. I need God. I am spiritually poor. I need God in my life. What am I lacking? I can't produce what is missing. I can't find. I am a sinner that needs forgiveness, freedom, healing, restoration, and eternal life. And we find this, this beatitude, this attitude that leads to happiness in Matthew 5.3. Happy are those who know they are spiritually poor. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. I like it also in the NLT version, Matthew 5, 3, NLT. God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for him. For the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Wow. 
So how do we receive that man? You know, I need God. In this portion of scripture, Jesus is saying, let's start off with the yeah, foundation. That's it. If you really want to be happy, the first thing you're going to realize, first of all, I'm not happy. There's something missing. And what I need, I can't produce. Yes. I've tried to produce it. I'm empty yes. and I can't fill it. Yes. I'm looking and I can't find it. Right. This is the first mindset yes. that opens the door to a new life is this, I need God. God. Yes. I need God. Yes. I don't need another drink. I don't need to shoot up one more time. No. I don't need another girlfriend. I don't need to go to another porn site. No. Uh, all these things, I, I, what I need, I realize I went through all that stuff. I need God. I need God in my life. And, and once we recognize that, it's the open door yes. to the Macarius life or yes. the supreme joy or this blessed life that God has for us. So it's a realization, yeah. I need I God. Need God. The happiness we are looking for can only be found in God. Again, the happiness we're looking for, it can only be found in God. Philippians 4.4 4 in the ERV version says this, Always be filled with joy in the Lord. Where does our joy come from? In the Lord. Always be filled with joy in the Lord. I will say it again. Be filled with joy. Man, I like that. Our joy is only found in God. I like this. Talk about possessions or buying things. We can buy a house, but we can't buy a home. Money can buy you medicine, but it can't buy you health. Money can buy you amusement. Kind of said you could buy a car, you could be amused. But it can't buy true and lasting contentment. So we could have money, could buy a house, but doesn't buy a home. A survey was done, and look at this survey that was done with Christians for believers. Spiritually committed people are more happy than non-spiritually committed people. Great statement. It's a great survey they took with believers. Spiritually committed people are more happy than non-spiritually committed people. Well, here's the conclusion. Godly people are happier than ungodly people. Isn't that right? Yeah. And, and what, what this is saying, that godly doesn't mean that they, they're church attenders. That's, that's what it means. And we're not talking about religious people either. But we're talking about people that live according to God's ways. Or yes. these are people that like we talked about that hear and do, hear and practice what God teaches. And this is what happens. Those people live a life that's happier than those that do it their own way. Now, there, there's, a, there's a way to live that leads to happiness. There's a way to think that leads to happiness and joy. Then there's a way to live that leads to misery. Yeah. You know, you could talk to someone as, and just talk to them for a few minutes, and you could tell where their life is headed. That's right. And have you ever talked to someone that they're on the wrong path and you know it? And you go, oh, oh, that person is headed for some destruction. That, head, that person is headed for some major depression. That person is headed for, for prison. <laughs> I can tell by the way they're living. Yeah. And the idea here is, is that there's a lifestyle that the scripture is saying here that if we follow the lifestyle of God's word, yes. that it would lead to the joy-filled life. Or godly people are happier than those that are ungodly. Right. Or those that follow God's ways are happier than those that don't follow God's ways. I'm yeah, going to give you that. an example uh, of following God's way. Um, following God's way is to forgive your enemies or love your enemies. Love your enemies. Um, not following God's way is to kill your enemies or <laughs> hurt your enemies or, or take revenge over your enemies and hold on to a grudge. Yeah. Now, who's going to be happier? The one that forgave or the one that's holding on to this revenge and this anger and is upset? The truth right. is, it's impossible for you to be happy if you're holding on to resentment, if you're holding on to a grudge, and you hate someone. Yeah. So there's our way, yeah. and then there's yeah. God's way. And if we do it God's way, this is what's going to happen. You're going to be happy. Yeah. I, you know, there's been people that have said stuff about you, me, yeah. anybody, you, yeah. everybody here. You know, but what, one of the things I, this is how I take revenge. Right. I continue to be happy. Yeah. Because I think, I, I think the greatest revenge I could have 
over someone that's trying to say stuff and make me miserable is that when they see me, I'm happy, happy and smiling. succeeding. Yeah. You know, that's, I remember, yeah, I remember when um, I broke up with Lisa. Oh. I broke up with Lisa and, and I used to break up with her like every other month. Every <laughs> and, and I was so insecure. As that's cold-blooded, Pastor I, I know, Marco. I was so insecure as a boyfriend. <laughs> That uh, this is crazy, and don't don't not don't don't judge me, but this is how where I was. She would just start every time I broke up with her, she start crying, and when she would start crying, it make me feel like so powerful and so important. Whoa! Right, and and I remember I, I break That's up. That's a little with her. sick thinking. That's a little sick if you ask me. <laughs> she. She, I break up, and then she would come, call me. Well, you know what's going on? How can we make this better? And I go, well, think about what you did in the next time. All right, oh we'll get back together, but you know oh you need God. to, like, strain this out, right? So, so then what ended up happening, one day I broke up with her, and she didn't come crying. <laughs> Good for Lisa. She, she didn't come crying, and she just in, she decided to enjoy herself. She went with a friend. They went to L.A. to some Christian concert. She didn't call me nothing. She was having a grand, <laughs> grand old time. I was waiting for her to call waiting me. She didn't call. call me. She was just decided, I'm not going to make you, I'm not going to allow you to control my emotions anymore. Right. I'm going to be happy. Go ahead, so she, Lisa. So she, she, she started being, so I started looking for her. Because I couldn't find her, so I'm serious. I started looking for her. I, I went to the police station. I'm not exaggerating. Oh missing reports, everything. Missing reports? Yeah, missing reports. I got my, my cousin with me, Marcus. Marcus. So we were driving up for hours in San Bernardino. There must be something wrong oh because she would call gosh. me. And my cousin said, what's wrong? I broke up with her. She hasn't called me nothing. I went over her house. She's not there. <laughs> There's something wrong. She probably got kidnapped or something. Oh, my god! So, I, like, I'm going all over the city, right? Yeah. I'm looking for hours. 12 o'clock midnight. She's still not home. She's not home. No, right, right around 12 minutes, she shows oh, up. She shows up. She shows up at her house, happy, having a good time with her friend. I go, where were you? She goes, why do I have to answer to you? Oh. You're not my boyfriend. I thought we broke up. Hell. I go, well, we're not broken up anymore. <laughs> but the idea was the greatest revenge you could ever take over an enemy is not being angry, not being upset, not getting back at them. The greatest revenge is that you're happy and you have joy and you're successful and you move on. If someone left you, don't let them take your happiness with you, with them. You say, man, you messed up because the best me you haven't seen yet. Tell them. You see me a year from now, you're going to be wishing That's that you could right. be with me, but I don't do do-overs, so tough luck. Uh, see ya. <laughs> I've learned to be happy without you, and I realized with you, wow. I wasn't really happy anyways. I love it. Tell them, Pastor. That's exactly right. I need God. The first step, we'll kind of end it here. The first step of getting right with God and experiencing happiness is admitting I am not right with God. So we're talking about I need God. The first step of getting right with God and experiencing his happiness is admitting I'm not right with God. Psalms 30 verse or Proverbs 30, 12. There are people who think they are pure when they are as filthy as they can be. Our first step to really enjoying happiness is an attitude, a mindset, I need God. And the way we find God, the way we, the way we accept God, you're saying, Pastor, first step, we have to really say, I need some help. I am filthy. I've made mistakes. I've done things that I'm not happy about. I need God. Well, you know, at home, I have a lamp in my, in my, in my study room, and I have this lamp that hasn't been working yeah. for right around a month. Mm. And... I concluded the reason it's not working is just how smart I am. It needs a light bulb. It needs a light bulb. It needs a light bulb. But I don't have a light bulb. <laughs> and every time I go to the store, I forget to buy the light bulb. So I'm in my study Can't room without that lamp working for around a, mu around a month. It's not going to work. So this is what happened. <laughs> so this is what happened. Yesterday, I looked at that lamp one more time and asked myself a question. Maybe... I didn't plug it in. Oh! So, and then I looked, I looked, help and I didn't plug it in. Help us, God. As soon as I plugged it in. We all need help, Lord. The help light us, God. Worked. 
<laughs> said, Pastor, what does it have to do with me? Wow. Could it be wow. that you're like me yeah. with that light? You think you need a light bulb. <laughs> you think you need this. Yeah, you need that. You need the other. But the problem is you ain't plugged in. Ain't plugged in. Just need God. And when you're plugged in, you finally will reach your potential. That's right. Everything else you've been going to doesn't turn on the light. Yes. And it, it turns you on for a moment, but and then you're, you're stuck. And it, it, it gets you high for a moment, and then you, you, you fall lower than you've ever been. You get drunk, yeah. and at the end, you have a hangover. Yes. You're going out there doing your thing, and then you ruin your life. You know, you start realizing, could it be like you're like me? It's that light bulb. Mm. You just thought you needed a light bulb, but actually she needs to be plugged in. And this first attitude that Jesus says, blessed are the spiritually poor, or blessed are those who realize they need God, God. are they're the ones that realize, I just found out. I've tried everything else. This is the problem. I need to be plugged in. I need God in my life. And you know, that is a choice. Yeah. Jesus came to give you an abundant life. Amen. The Bible says the devil's out to kill, steal, and destroy. Maybe this is the life you've been living. Misery and destruction follow you. It's just a yes. cycle. Or you have all kinds of things, but it doesn't matter how many things you get. You need more things mm. because that void in your heart is so big. Yeah. It's like a bottomless lake. You just keep putting stuff in, putting stuff in, putting stuff in, and the hole gets bigger. Wow. And what you need is really a deep relationship yes. with God. God. And it could start right now. Pastor Robert, yes. lead us into that prayer. Yeah, you're here right now. You're at home. If you could bow your head and close your eyes for a moment. Maybe you're at your workplace, wherever you're at. Let's just have a moment with God right now. In order to be happy, the first attitude mindset, we need God. If you're hurting tonight, God is the answer. He said, man, I, I want that joy you're talking about. I've been, I've been miserable. Here's the answer. It's God. If tonight you need to surrender your life to God, let's do that. Let's surrender everything to God. Sometimes when we're holding on to a few things, we're not going to experience the joy, not going to experience the happiness. It's only when we surrender our lives to God. And most importantly of all, if you die tonight, where are you going? Have you put your faith in Jesus, with every head by every eyes closed. And, man, that's me. I want the joy. I want peace. I want eternal life. Man, I want to make sure if I die today, I, man, I want to make sure I'm right with God. I want that joy. Repeat this prayer after me. Say, Jesus, I need you today. I ask forgiveness of all the sins I've committed. Jesus, come into my heart. And become my Lord and Savior. From this day forward, I choose to be your disciple. Holy Spirit, fill me. Set me free from all my bad habits, all my addictions. Jesus, set me free from all my pain and all my suffering. Jesus, today, I choose happiness. And happiness is found in you. So, God, I surrender everything. I surrender my heart. I surrender my body. I surrender my mind to you. Today I am saved. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, this is what we're going to do before we we dismiss and leave. And what I want to do is just open up this time for prayer in your home in your car, in the break room, wherever you're at. And the Bible says, my house should be called a house of prayer. And this is what the Bible says. If you ask, you receive. If we don't ask, we don't receive. Someone right now needs someone to pray. You need someone to pray over you because really you've been depressed. You've been hurting. You need someone literally to lay hands on you and pray for you and have that contact of love. The presence of God's already there. But we need to activate it with prayer. Someone could get set free from a lifestyle of depression. It's been so deep that it's almost been passed on from mom to you, the daughter. And now you're seeing your daughter, the grandbaby, or the granddaughter, 
is experiencing the same level of darkness and depression and emotional loneliness within themselves. And that needs to be broken right now. Or maybe you're stressed out about something. You're thinking about your future and your future, it looks hard. It looks difficult. And it's overwhelming your present life. And God says, come on, cast your cares upon me. I care for you. Stop walking with all that pressure on your, on your shoulders. I'm going to help you. We can get this thing. We're going to get this done together. I want you to enjoy life. And every mission and, and assignment I give you and challenge that you're facing, an obstacle, you're not supposed to do it on your own. Let me help you. Or maybe you got a bad doctor's report. Or you're going through marriage problems. I don't know what it is. But whatever's stealing your joy and your peace, it's time for you to give that to God. Plug into God. Plug into his peace. Plug into his joy. Jesus, the joy, Jesus will give you joy through his spirit. The Bible said that the fruit of the spirit is love and then joy and peace. God wants you to have joy. Will you give it to God today? So let's sing this song. We're just going to go one round of a song. And in the homes, open up. Someone take the lead. Let's pray. Who needs prayer? Or do you need prayer? What do you need prayer for? What do you need prayer for? What do you need prayer for? And let's even surround that person or surround the people who need prayer. Let's lay hands on them and let's pray for them. Someone today is going to get set free. Someone's going to totally get Holy Jesus, even in this moment, it's going to happen. Even after the prayer, it's time for us to pray with them. Let's pray with them right now as we, as we sing this song. If we already started praying, you could, we can continue praying in the home. But I just want to thank every one of you for tuning in. And just remember this, that there is joy in the Lord. Yes. And God commands us, rejoice in the Lord, in yes. the Lord. Always, again, I say rejoice. Yes. Tomorrow, why don't we just do this? Wake up in the morning and just declare that scripture. Yes. This is the day the Lord has made. Lord has and made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And just declare over yourself, Lord, to be happy, all I need is you, and you're with me. This is going to be a good day. Yes. Why not say that over yourself, over your family, and watch how God takes that declaration that you've made by faith 
and turn that day around. Yes. I'm looking forward to hearing some testimonies because I really believe there's a joy and a peace and a happiness that God right now through the airwaves is right, right now imparting into your life today, yes. into your family. Depression's gone. Suicidal thoughts are gone. Yes. Fear is gone. Joy is here. Peace is here. Happiness is here. We have a bright future with the Lord. God bless you. We love you. See you this Sunday. You do not want to miss it. We're having an awesome time on Sunday mornings. Those that are tuning in online, tune in online. Sunday mornings, 9 and 11. And those that are coming in, come in. We have an amazing service planned out for you. We love you. Remember this. If God's for you, there's no one can come against you. God bless you. Continue praying. God's with you. Love you.